Thank you very much and good afternoon everyone. Um, today we're here to talk about the Live and Learn in Ireland project and uh, basically this came out from a need to help international students transition into the Irish education system. To help them be successful and to help them to hit the ground running. Because we found that there was a lot of um, myths and legends, shall we say, out there about the Irish education system. And it was important that we clarify and make sure that the students actually know what they're getting into and know our academic style in particular. So the focus, therefore, of the project is on to enhance the learning experience of the students when they actually arrive in Ireland. Um, to do this, we actually wanted to develop resources for both the students and the academic and administration staff that are going to deal with the students when they actually arrive in Ireland, so that everybody is familiar with what the students actually need and how we can help them and how we can incorporate them into the class and ensure that they feel part of the institute that they join when they arrive in Ireland. In order to do that, we decided that we needed to do a very rigorous and extensive literature review on what's out there and what's already been accomplished and what other people are actually doing. So that we identified the gaps in what's there so that we could develop resources that would actually help the students themselves to learn before they actually come to Ireland about what to expect when they actually get here. That's where we decided to focus because that's where we found that the biggest gap was. To do this, we wanted to ensure that the relevance to the students and make sure that this was student informed. So the student at all times is key and central to what we're doing. We want to make sure that they feel at home with the actual units that we developed and to make sure that they learn from those units. In order to do that again, we decided to survey the students at the beginning to see exactly where they found the gaps. So students that have arrived, what didn't they know, what would they have liked to know, and how would they like to interact with us. So we actually surveyed over 500 students to begin with. After developing the pilot, we went back and resurveyed people, and we've over 500. So altogether, we've over 1,000 student surveys conducted on this study. Uh, once we've done that, then we decided to we have disseminating both the objects and the research. And my colleagues will talk more about that when we get later on in the actual project. But what we've, again, looking at the pedagogical and social differences and the background of the students when they come to Ireland, that's what we wanted to inform the staff units with. Because, as we know, the students are coming from very diverse areas. Some people are very much led by critical thinking and some are led by rote learning. So we wanted to ensure that everybody knows that before they get here and which student type they're actually dealing with. So our staff units were very much informed by the students and what they actually came to us with. So what do we actually do? We developed therefore four units for the students, two of which are based on their academic needs. How do we teach in Ireland? How are you supposed to learn in Ireland? What are the pedagogies that we employ? And how can you get used to them before you actually arrive? So the academic units, both the two academic units focus on that. And then we found that there was a big need for social and practical experience and social and practical information for the students when they actually arrive here so that they can feel at home in Ireland, if you like, so that they have some experience of how we think. Uh, for example, you know, ask your man. Ask your man to somebody who's not from Ireland is who, what, where is the man, what's he doing, what do we want, you know. They want to find this person that they don't know. So it's to get them used to how we actually speak and how we interact with people. So that was the aim of the social side of the actual unit. So we've one unit based on that and how we talk and particularly how we engage with each other. So for example, they can listen to radio stations here in Ireland before they actually get here so that they can improve their English that way. Now, looking at the practical side then, of course, is where's the bus? In some countries, buses come automatically every minute. We know that doesn't happen here, so therefore we have to inform people of that. From an academic point of view, as I said, we were looking at the pedagogy that the students are used to before they actually arrive here. And as we know, we are very different. We deliver differently. We think differently. So we wanted to get the students used to that as they arrived. <coughs> In order to do that, we have a very successful cross-functional, multidisciplinary team with representatives from the five institutions in the Southern Cluster. Um, today, our Cork colleagues unfortunately could not be here, but uh, we have Tom Farley here from uh, IT Tralee, and we also have Louise Nagel from IT Tralee, 
Ken McCarthy, who is going to uh, follow me here from WIT, and myself, Yvonne Kavanagh, from IT Carlo. So we have developed this team together, and so we're looking at it from different areas. We're not just concentrating on one particular experience. We want to ensure that we gather all the information so that the students come to a home rather than to just a country. And I'll hand over to my colleague, Ken, here to continue. Thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. I probably should say that even though I um, work uh, and live in Waterford, I'm a Corkman, so I, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I can fly the, fly the Cork flag. Uh, and, and interesting enough, one of the things that when we were trying to give examples of uh, the kind of content we wanted to include and explain to international students was, if you're in Cork and somebody says, I will, yeah, that doesn't mean they're going to do something for you. Um, it actually means the opposite. So how, how did we achieve what it is we wanted to do? Um, we had lots of meetings. Um, our, our previous project coordinator, who now works with Terry, um, was a good man for meetings. We had lots of uh, weekly teleconferences, and, and we had face-to-face -face meetings in each of the five institutions as well. So we took it in turn uh, to host those, um, and they, they actually informed a lot of, uh, a lot of um, the work that we did. We also had a shared workspace online um, that gave us a, a place to store all of the information that we gathered uh, and keep minutes and resources and all that, that sort of stuff. Um, in going through how we, how we approach that, um, the Literature Review was commissioned first and completed in IT Tralee, and that sort of informed the questions that we wanted to ask um, in the academic interviews that we conducted and in the student surveys that we, uh, that we, that we carried out. There was over 570 responses to our initial survey, which was a, a very rich a uh, data set um, to get in terms of what students would like to have known before they got here. Um, the interviews with academic and support staff gave us the perspective of what were the kind of things that students were coming to them with uh, as problems uh, on, a, on an ongoing basis. We then created a pilot unit over the summer and we tested that last uh, September, September 2015 and then um, revised um, based, uh, based on that. Um, and created additional units. So at this stage, all of the student units are complete, uh, all four of them, um, and they all live on the Live and Learn in Ireland.ie website. They were created in um, Articulate Storyline, I think it is. So even though they live on that website, they're not, they don't have to be there. They can be put on any other website as well. Um, the Live and Learn website is, is like many of the other projects here you're on, um, is, is, it's, a, it's a WordPress um, website, and we also have uh, the .ie.net.com and .org uh, domain names, so it's, it's very easy to get to. Um, the site itself is responsive, so if you look at it on a tablet or a phone, um, it should work. Um, there can be an issue with the storyline uh, or the articulate modules in that you have to download an additional plugin to, to, to use those. Um, what we're at at the moment is um, we're finalising the content of the staff units. They'll be ready, I think, next month. Um, the website is completed and, and operational, uh, and we've done quite a bit of dissemination at, at, at conferences. That's the, the landing page that people get to when they arrive on the website. Um, when they click on that, it branches out into the various different areas. But as I said, the website isn't the project. It's the units that are on there is, is, is really what the project is. So what's the impact been so far? Um, it has been used, I know, fairly extensively by UCC for pre-departure um, informing students before they come here. So Erasmus students before they come here are encouraged <coughs> to look at it. Um, one of the big, I suppose, unintended consequences or additional benefits of the, of, of the project was it was a realisation of the concept of the blend of professionals of the third space as, as articulated by Whitchurch. Because it was an unusual project in that I'm not an e-learning professional, I'm not even a, I'm not even a learning professional. Um, I, I'm, I'm a car salesman, actually, in a previous life. Um, Tom Farley defies explanation as to what, what, what he is. Uh, Yvonne is a lecturer. Um, Tony uh, and, and latterly um, Louise are on the IT side of it. And then our colleagues from CIT and UCC were in the international space. So, you know, if it was the international officers from five colleges joined together, we'd probably have a completely different outcome to what we have, given that we had different people bring, bringing different things and different perspectives. Um, but it worked really, really well. 
uh, so much so that we just don't want it to don't want it to end. I don't think. Um, it's actually quite timely that a project like this has been developed at this time because just last week um, Minister Bruton announced that he wants to increase the number of international students coming to Ireland um, and having a resource like this that explains what they can expect when they get here uh, and how things work um, we believe is, it's, it's, it's uh, a resource that absolutely needs to be there. And with that I'll hand over to our project coordinator Louise who will take you through the rest of it. Now, so I am going to cover um, dissemination and sustainability um, and elements of what have already been covered by my colleague Ken when he mentioned our website and the survey responses that we've had to date. Um, earlier on, I know that Professor um, Sarah Moore uh, mentioned the importance of establishing a strong network of vested interests in a project and I believe that's exactly what we have done. Um, here on the slide in front of you, you can see some of the positive, uh, or some of the universities, the international universities, who have given us positive feedback on the resources that have been developed by the project. Um, the feedback here is from international officers, um, from the staff, but also from the students that they have disseminated the resources to. Um, we also have feedback from academics. Um, there's a number of seminars that the partners have attended um, and you know, as I mentioned there, the feedback has come from Australia, the US, Europe um, and obviously the UK as well. I think it demonstrates the level of community and that we have established an emergent um, community best practice that, that can be leveraged and this is going to make um, dissemination and sustainability a lot easier in the long term. Um, so in terms of conferences, um, our colleagues here, my colleagues here, have presented at um, EdTech, which was in a Dublin-based um, conference in Limerick, in Boston, in Liverpool, um, and an international audience was reached. Um, and this audience, I believe, will be extended by the paper that has been submitted to the Journal of International Students um, by members of the, the group here today. Um, and it will also give weighting to the um, needs analysis and the, the research that was undertaken as part of the project as well. The resources have been promoted um, via the website and on social media um, and also through the international offices of the HEIs throughout the country. So they've all been contacted um, and banner, rollish banner stands have been put up outside the international offices and the partners are very active and they've given us very positive feedback um, you know, they're, they're distributing um, the resources among, among students actively and also um, within their own, um, their own um, associations and networks. Um, also in terms of the website, um, it is up on, on uh, various web links. ICOS, we have contacted, um, we're going to present to them actually as a group in the next few months, um, the IUA and um, institutes such as DKIT and IT Sligo have also put up the, the, the web link. Um, we hosted a soft launch in um, March 2016 down in IT Tralee and we propose to hold um, a hard launch now in the, next, in the next few months, quite possibly in December. We're planning that at the moment. Um, and we're going to target the external organisations that I mentioned earlier, ICOS, TIA, um, the IUA, Educate in Ireland, um, and the Teaching and Learning Forum. Um, also, just to mention that there was a webinar initially at the beginning of this project um, back in 2014, um, and it was, it was a, a great way to, um, to disseminate the information um, <coughs> around the project, and we also had um, a, a streaming of the, the soft launch in March 2016 as well, which reached a, a larger audience. Um, so I'm going to move on to sustainability. Um, so as I mentioned, given that we have a strong network, we're going to leverage all the contacts that we have. Um, we're firstly though going to put in an application um, for funding to the Teaching and Learning Enhancement Fund. Um, the call is out at the moment. So we're going to take the resources that we have developed um, and we're going to further extend them into a CPD module for HEI staff. So we see that there is a need for this for CPD, in, um, for the staff who are dealing with international students and supporting them in the transition here to, to Ireland. We also propose um, developing a consortium. So this would incorporate associate, um, associations and educators and partners who have a vested interest in the resources. The resources make their, their jobs easier 
um, and it is in their own interest to keep them up to date. We've costed um, the sustainability at under €4,000 um, a year in, in annual fees to maintain it and to update it. Um, so if it is distributed among the, the associations and educators who um, work with the international students, we believe it won't be a, a very large burden to them. Um, and finally, there is, there is also um, potential to develop an Erasmus Plus project. So we are beginning um, work in the next few weeks on putting in an application because we believe that the resources could be adapted and translated um, and could be used by um, universities throughout Europe. Um, and so there is, there is a great opportunity for that there as well. Um, so it's a non-commercial non resource, but we do believe that there is plenty of potential to, um, to harvest co contributions um, towards the maintenance of it into the future. Um, so I would just like to take this opportunity to thank the Teaching and Learning Forum um, for um, the support that they've given the project and to my colleagues who um, have worked very hard on the project and we look forward to working uh, together in the future and putting in future proposals as well. So thank you. <laughs>